Should you meet your heroes? Let's talk about it. All right, guys, so in this video, what we're gonna be going over specifically is iconic knives that I have seen for a long time, wanted to buy and ended up buying. And we're gonna go over, did these knives live up to their expectation because I think there's a strong kind of enigma to you know in things like car culture and even in personalities like you see celebrities right and you're like oh that person's so cool or they're so nice or they're so you know you put your adjective in there and then you end up meeting them or knowing them or even knowing of them and you find out that they're actually probably not as nice or as good or whatever you know as you thought they were and so there is kind of this enigma that floats out there that you should never meet your your heroes right because they're probably just humans pretty normal and pretty regular and same can go with you know like cars or other such things that you might idolize or dream about or fantasize and I definitely think in that type of uh, mindset or you know type of uh, understanding I think a lot of times humans are very prone to humans as a whole are pretty darn prone to kind of make the grass greener on the other side or think that something is better than it might actually be and so that is what we're going to be talking about in this video today so first off let's start off with one of my coolest grails and I think one of the first ones that I really wanted to collect and got and this is the Benchmade 630 skirmish or full size skirmish and this thing is a bit of a wash for me when it comes to the whole like never meet your heroes thing this one's a little bit of a wash because in fairness and granted I could have always pulled out a ruler or something to really visualize kind of the size of this thing but this was a knife that I wanted for a very long time and saw it in many you know kind of um pictures online and online listings and of course I bought it many years after it was discontinued but the 630 skirmish is undoubtedly probably one of my favorite knives from an aesthetic standpoint I think it looks really cool it somehow at least in my opinion and I'm sure this is probably just my opinion it somehow manages to blend very well a kind of futuristic look with a old school um or, or almost maybe timeless look. And so once again, it looks very, you know, futuristic, especially with all these like opening holes and stuff like that. But I feel like it also looks very timeless, especially with the handle, the way that it is. I mean, this thing is very like understated, but yet still really cool. So I'm not quite sure the best way to explain the aesthetic, but I love it. I also love the very dramatic, um, recurved blade and just the overall kind of spear point to it however like i said the reason why i think this is kind of a, a partial or maybe a bit of a wash for me is that honestly the 630 skirmish is huge and i really do not carry this knife that much to put it up against something a little bit more normal sized this is a chris reeve knives Umnum's on and this is already what I think most people consider like a decent sized EDC folder you can see that um, the skirmish over here is like at least another half inch larger in all dimensions so it is a very very big knife and it's also one of those knives that was released during that time frame where tip down was still cool so I'm gonna do another video talking about like styles of carry but tip down is definitely one of my least favorite ways of carrying a knife so unfortunately this knife has a tip down pocket clip which does blend well with the overall symmetry of the knife like it doesn't look bad but it is also very large and yeah just uh this knife definitely is um the best way to put it i would say a product of its time and it's definitely a little bit dated with the pocket clip anyways now let's talk about a knife that is a lot newer to me and pretty darn cool so this is the Chris Reeve Knives Umnumzon, or Umnumzon, however you'd like to say it. And this one is a knife that I definitely wanted for a significant amount of time. And honestly, for me, I wanted the Sabenza, the Inkosi, and the Umnumzon to kind of complete the trio of Chris Reeve folders that I really like. Not to say that there aren't other folders out there, there are, but these three are like the top tier for me. So getting this one in hand, I was a little bit trepidatious because a lot of people have noted and said, you know, um, largely people who don't own these knives, like they are, are kind of critical of the overall ergonomics. But I will say, at least for me, and I can't speak for everyone, but the ergonomics tend to be really good for me. And I think on the Umnumzon, it's very hit or miss. And I will say about the only thing that is not 
preferable of this knife is the pocket clip positioning. If I don't put my hand on this thing just right, the pocket clip can kind of dig into my ring finger and it's a little bit of a hot spot. But outside of that, I think the Umnum Zon is very cool and I really love kind of the mindset behind the Umnum Zon. Like this is supposed to be, you know, the most kind of modern, uh, uh, or it's supposed to be basically the most modern version of Chris Reeve and it features like the most modernized types of features on it. And I think it's a very well executed blade and I love the blade shape. For me, a lot of people love the kind of harpoon styled drop point, but I do really love the Tonto. And I love the way that Chris Reeve does their Tontos. This is not my only Tonto in the collection uh, from Chris Reeve, but it is definitely very cool. All right, next one up is the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza. And yes, there's gonna be quite a few Chris Reeves on here because these are all kind of my heroes, if you will. Um, these are all very iconic knives. So the Sabenza for me, I think is one of the few total wins on the like heroes side of things. And that is that just because the Sabenza is such a timeless design and timeless knife, like it is so hard to not love this thing. Like, this thing is literally just such a, a timeless knife and just a classic knife. Like honestly, it's very well made. And uh, yeah, I can't really find anything fault with this knife. I mean, some people might say that they don't like the blade stock thickness and it's a little thin, but honestly, like when it comes down to a classy or really even just a multi-role knife, like this can fit the bill so many ways and in so many different like circumstances and situations it is hard to really not love. And I think think like the touch of micarta it just puts it over the edge it's really cool at least it's very very well uh, balanced not just physically but also in what it can do so really this is like the gold standard for knives and i think i'm definitely not the only one to think that believe that or say that so it's definitely a pretty cool knife. Now I will say the Inkosi is next up and the Inkosi is probably the only knife from Chris Reeve that I wanted more than the Sabenza and that is because the Inkosi is originally modeled after or is essentially the Chris Reeve knife Sabenza 25 and the Sabenza 25 was supposed to be the spiritual successor to the Sabenza. Now it didn't end up playing out that way and of course now we have the Inkosi as its own standalone knife and it for me is a really really awesome knife this is one that i knew i wanted like i said for a very long time they are kind of difficult to find at least the large incosis and that is what i wanted but uh, i'm definitely not disappointed with this knife at all and for some people once again there might be some ergonomic things like you know with the uh, umnums on if it doesn't fit you right then it won't be right but uh, for me these little finger grooves fit me perfectly the way it feels in hand like there's no hot spots to me and I think that overall like this just truly is an improvement to the Sabenza and like the Sabenza is already such an awesome knife but I think the Inkosi for me personally is just a little bit better and once again I think it retains so much of the original kind of mindset and what went into the Sabenza to make the Sabenza a great knife. All right, last one up is going to be my full custom Gavco. Now this one is definitely going to be interesting because the full custom Gavco is something that I've wanted for a very long time. Gavco, as far as uh, Michael Gavick, um, like the manufacturer of these knives or maker of these knives is a really awesome person. And as I've mentioned in other videos, pretty in instrumental to me getting into knives. Like he was one of the original kind of knife tubers. And even though his channel is reasonably small, you know, he is a very devoted following. I wouldn't say he's a huge following, just a very devoted one. But that being said, I really did want a Gavco nurse because I really like the style and overall shape of these. And in addition, I think what really sold me on this one is not only was it an XL, so it's larger than his normal nurses, but there's a lot of um, Borka-esque-ness to this knife. And I will say, if you guys don't know who Borka knives are, definitely worth checking out. But most people that are watching this video are probably familiar with Borka, at least through their many collaborations with Microtech, with things like the Auto Stitch, the Stitch Ram Lock, um, different the stitch in its many different variations and flavors. They also make the, I'm blanking on what the fixed blade is, but uh, he's worked with Fox Knives and Microtech to make fixed blades 
um, as well. So Borka is definitely out there. And I will say, if you know what the stitch is, this um, blade shape here is very, very reminiscent of the stitch. So it's very nice in that regard. And I don't just like it because it's like a Borka, but I do really like it because it is a Gavco. And this is a full custom. And I will say this is my first and um, only full custom in the collection. And I will say it's definitely an interesting knife because uh, part of me can see the value or I don't want to say value per se, but why they're so expensive. And that is that really, you know, you're paying for some person, you know, in this case, Gavco to sit down and make this knife by hand. And so like every little bit on this knife is, you know, handmade and it's kind of hard to see in the camera, but there's a ton of like rock pattern texturing on the back of the handle. Of course, there is the texturing on both the clip that you guys are seeing, which is made out of Timascus. And of course, the texturing that is all over the blade or sorry, not well, the blade too, but the handles. And then of course, the rock pattern that is on the spine of the blade. And of course, on these areas that are not hit by the grind, there's also texturing on that. So there's so much, um, craftsmanship that goes into making this blade and once again you know a lot of these processes are very automated with a full production knife but this is all done one at a time by hand by a maker so that is what makes it very expensive and very unique and of course this is one of one so there's never going to be another uh, nurse that looks just like this even if there's another XL Warncliffe nurse that Gavco makes which he will invariably there's never going to be another one that looks like this it is you know truly one of one so once again there's a lot of expense to that but at the same time too it does ma really make you sit there and you know look at it and be like is it really worth you know over a thousand dollars right like is this really a a, you know, one thousand plus dollar knife, right? And so, for for some people, you know, it's definitely going to be a no. But for someone who's a heavy knife enthusiast who really does care about knives, and or you know, if someone like Gavco was a very instrumental person to you, you know, then it might become a yes, right? So, anyways, that is the last one for me. Like I said, this is a bit of a wash for me as far as like never meet your heroes because part of me really can understand and enjoy and like this knife like i really like it and i know my subscribers love the halo knife so to speak but uh you know it definitely sometimes is hard to stomach the fact that this is a you know thousand plus dollar knife and especially being that it's you know reasonably small um, in the grand scheme of things but that being said it definitely is very cool and it is a part of my collection to stay like i'm not getting rid of it anytime soon and i know definitely if i was there are so many uh subscribers that would be chomping at the bits to get the knife which is at least pretty cool to know but at the same time too a very very collectible knife for me personally so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed this look at and breakdown of knives that i think for me were you know like goal posts things that i really wanted to get for my collection and to have to use to you know be able to own and uh yeah so it's been very cool to have these knives in the collection and honestly i would say that the vast majority of them you know really do hit that kind of mark of being you know what i thought they would be and i try to have an overall pretty realistic look and once again it helps that i have many knives like i have over 40 knives so i kind of understand you know that something isn't going to just blow me out of the water and be so incredible that you know i'll never want to touch another knife again so i do have a, a pretty pragmatic view or realistic view of what a knife will be but it is cool to be able to have the knives that you look at and you're like that is a knife i want in my collection so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out